Rolex is the number one watch brand in the world and represents class, style, and luxury. These watches, which are now worn by the elite and rich class, were originally made for soldiers and commoners, and the man behind the brand of Rolex was from an orphanage. This is the story of rags to riches, and from riches to becoming the number one watch brand in the world. This is the story of Hans Wilsdorf and his Rolex. So without wasting much time, let's start this story with the childhood of this legend. The Childhood Hans Wilsdorf was born in Kolmbach, Germany on the 22nd of March 1881 to father Johann Daniel Ferdinand Wilsdorf and mother Anna Wilsdorf. This was an upper middle class family where his father Johann had a family iron tool business and he wanted his son to pursue the same. Hans was the second child of three children and the only son, but before he could turn even one, his mother died at the age of 36 due to some illness and soon a year later, his father joined his mother making Hans an orphan. After the death of his parents, his uncle took the responsibility for Hans and his sisters. His uncle sold his father's iron tool business and with the money, he sent them to excellent boarding schools where they received superb educations. Little Hans was an excellent student and had a deep interest in math and economics. He even learned to write and read English. Everything was not hunky-dory for him. He also struggled in school and found it difficult to fit in the school environment. The wheel of time kept rolling for Hans. In these school days, he strengthened his knowledge on different topics, which helped him to be creative. And with time, he began to grow up and things began to change for this orphan boy who is now a teenager. A new beginning. From the age of 19, he started working as an apprentice at a reputed pearl exporting company where he got the taste of working in big companies. A year later, he received a letter from a friend with a job offer to work in Kuno Korta. This was a watchmaking company in Switzerland. In the early 1900s, the watches needed winding as they were not battery powered yet. And in this company, he had the role of winding hundreds of pocket watches and ensuring their good quality. Hans saw the potential in this job and grabbed the opportunity with both hands. And this proved to be the best decision of his life as in this job, he learned the basics of watchmaking. When everything was going well, he was called by the German government to fight as a soldier and Hans served in the German military. And after serving for two long years, his passion for watches had multiplied many folds. In 1903, at the age of 22, he went to London, England and found work for another high quality watchmaking company. In this company, he had the responsibility to sell watches and he did that efficiently. Hans stayed and worked in this company for two years, deepening his knowledge of watchmaking. And it is in these two years he met the love of his life, Florence Frances May Crotty, and he married her soon after realizing she is the one. But this was not all for Hans. Greater challenges were waiting for him. The Commitment in 1904, Hans expressed his desire to make watches to Alfred Davis, who was a businessman with huge capital. He saw a passion in Hans's eyes to make quality watches, and with that, he agreed to invest in this watchmaking company. In 1905, they founded this watch company in London. The duo called it Wilsdorf and Davis Private Limited, which would go on to change the watchmaking business in the world. The company started making pocket watches, and in no time, they opened a branch in Switzerland. But opening a company and producing watches was only the first step in Hans's life, and the genius in him was not happy. He was craving to create something new and marvelous out of watches. In 1905, the men carried only pocket watches. It was more accurate because of the bigger internal parts, but it had a problem. You have to pull it out from the pocket. On the other hand, wrist watches were worn by ladies and because of their small size, they were not as accurate as pocket watches. Hans wanted to solve this problem. He wanted to create wristwatches which would show accurate time and still be taut enough for rough handling. This pursuit of excellence took Hans to different watchmakers in Europe who made ladies wristwatches. He committed a few years to understand the details of wristwatches and started crafting his wristwatches for common men and women. Each one would be more precise than the previous one. Soon, people started wearing these watches, which started to reflect on the reputation of the company. And by the end of 1908, Wilsdorf and Davis Private Limited became one of the top watch brands in the United Kingdom. With the increase in popularity and increase in sales of the company, Hans wanted a simple name for the brand, a name which can be pronounced easily and can fit in the watch. After much brainstorming, he found the name and he instantly knew that it was it. And that name was Rolex. And a few days later, he registered the new name in London in 1908. And this name still rules the watch business. But troubles were about to start for Rolex and Hans. Troubles. It was just 14 days after this company changed its name to Rolex that World War I started and the United Kingdom was part of it. 
during this time, many wristwatch companies began to shut down. And Rolex, well, it was just growing continuously. But Hans being of German origin started getting hate. And on top of that, in 1915, the British government imposed a 33% of customs duty on the companies registered in London. This forced Hans to shift its international headquarters from London to Bien, Switzerland. And in 1919, Rolex moved its headquarters to Geneva, Switzerland, where it remains to this day. This was not easy for Hans or Rolex, but soon things began to change for Rolex, the company which survived the Great War. The Rise Rolex, which is led by genius Hans Wilsdorf, was creating watches and they were selling them like hotcakes across the world. But Hans wanted more. He wanted to create something new which would go on to impress the world, so he started working on a watch that works in the water, a waterproof watch. It may sound normal now, but in the 1920s, this idea was revolutionary, and he started working on it with his team. After much failure and struggle, he finally created it in the year 1926, and he named it the Rolex Oyster, a completely waterproof watch. But Hans was not ready to reveal it to the world yet, so he waited for that moment. While reading a newspaper, he found out about a British lady, Mercedes Gleitz. She was a swimmer and claimed to have swum 20.5 miles in the English Channel. Hans saw this as an opportunity to market his waterproof watch. In 1927, he asked Mercedes to swim again, but with a watch on her neck as a necklace. But unfortunately, Mercedes could only cover four-fifths of the channel. But news of the Rolex Oysters soared. Every newspaper published this event, and Rolex got instant global recognition where people went just crazy about this amazing waterproof watch. Now Rolex was reaching new heights with its popularity, and at such time the founder thought it needed a logo, which would not only represent the brand, but become a symbol of success. Thus came the famous crown logo, which was registered in 1930. Hans didn't stop there. He released one more watch almost four years later, and he called it Rolex Perpetual. And it was this watch that brought a revolution in the world of watchmaking. It was a self-winding watch and one of its kind, which captured the watch market single-handedly. And when World War II started, the government started giving these watches to the soldiers as they were cheap, and most importantly, they were accurate. Rule. With World War II started, everyone started developing a hate for Germans, and the founder of Rolex didn't go untouched by it. He was looked down upon for having a German name, and even moving his goods from Switzerland to different parts of Europe became difficult. The man of dedication Hans was, he continued to work on his next watch model. In the last year of the war in 1944, his wife passed away, filling him with grief. But that didn't stop him either. He completed his new watch and presented it before the world, calling it Rolex Datejust. It was an upgrade. This watch not only showed time, but also date, and that too with precision. Legacy Hans has already become a legend who made impossible things possible with his dedication, and this new watch, Rolex Datejust, just gave wings to Rolex's popularity. But the absence of his wife was too heavy on him. In such grief, he founded Hans Wilsdorf Foundation, and in the same year, he transferred 100% of this ownership to this non-profit foundation. To this day, it owns the Rolex, where much of its profit goes to charity. Rolex released new models, each one being better than the previous one. Like it released Rolex Submarine in 1954, Watch for Divers. In 1955, Rolex releases Rolex Daygust. This watch even shows the day of the week along with the time. It was July 6, 1960 when Hans took his last breath, leaving behind an empire and legacy that was created with dedication and love for watchmaking. We are sure this dedication of Hans toward his work would inspire generations of humans for centuries and beyond. Thanks for watching the video. Comment down below your favorite part and let us know. Also press the subscribe button and bell icon for regular updates.